um, CEO Congress is actually um, a sister Congress to the um, EMU Congress. Um, EMU Congress has been conducted um, sub, uh, five times. Um, they, we conducted two of the EMU Congress in um, North Cyprus. And at the same time, we also conducted one of the conferences in Cappadocia. And then um, the other EMU Congress was also conducted in uh, Istanbul Nishan Tashi University. And um, the last EMU Congress actually was conducted in uh, Ma uh, Macedonia in Gostivar. And um, like I said earlier on, the CEO Congress, it's actually um, a sister Congress to the EMU Congress. So therefore, I would, like to thank, I would like to thank you all for actually participating in this Congress. And also, I would like to welcome you all. And I also like to uh, wish you a pleasant and um, a happy Congress. Um, the CEO Congress actually um, em uh, entails participants from about 29 countries. And um, so, uh, well, let's invite uh, Dr. Siham El Kafafi, the Director of Arrows Research Consultancy from New Zealand. You see the screen? Is it clear? Yes, we can see. Yeah. Uh, I would like to uh, thank you uh, for this opportunity on the CEO Congress, and I would like to thank uh, uh, the organizers, uh, Professor Hemet, Kareem, all the rest, uh, the moderators of all the sessions, and uh, my esteemed colleagues and uh, participants. Uh, greetings from New Zealand. Uh, it is the end of Friday for us, and good morning or uh, uh, have a good day. Um, today, I would like to actually share with you, my presentation is going to talk about uh, the work, new trends after COVID-19. And in order to discuss that, I need to um, explain to you what has been happening here in relation to uh, COVID-19 in New Zealand, and, and then I take it further. So, um, as we all know, uh, there has been uh, um, a great technological uh, development, globalization, lots of changes in the technology era that has changed uh, the face of the labor market. And after that uh, came COVID and the pandemic spread and it affected millions of people who lost their jobs. And that was another hit for the labor market. As a result, Everybody has been thinking of uh, what are our options, we have to be more creative, uh, what is the financial realities that all of us are facing, how are we going to have sustainable jobs in this volatile labor market. Uh, as we all know, uh, there are lots of similarities while I've been listening to my other colleagues in different countries. Um, we all went through lockdown. Uh, we were one of the countries here in New Zealand that was successful in curbing the effect of uh, COVID-19. Uh, but of course, uh, tourism is hit. As you all know, our borders are closed. Uh, we are negotiating for ages with Australia to have our little bubble. It's not happening. Today, again, on the news, we heard that they, uh, Christmas is approaching and they are having new cases of COVID. Our government is still reluctant to open uh, the borders. Uh, we can go there. We do not need to be in quarantine, but if anybody goes overseas and comes back, and now we have to pay for our own quarantine. Uh, there is a waiting list of two, three months. Uh, it's about $3,000 for two weeks, 14 days in quarantine. So everybody is thinking if they're going overseas, coming back, how is it going to affect them? This is from the tourism perspective. Uh, if we're going to talk about the social perspective, there is also other uh, uh, repercussions. Um, there is lots of uh, statistics that talks about how the global uh, world has been affected economically, uh, even worse than the depression of the 1930s. If we're going to look specifically on the employment and its effect uh, because of COVID, uh, there has been 26 million in America that filed for unemployment, 59 million uh, uh, lost jobs in Europe. Uh, here in New Zealand, uh, the unemployment has increased from 4% to 6.5, and also the underutilization percentage is 13.2, uh, which is the untapped capacity of labor 
the people who are searching actively for employment, who are willing to get employment as soon as possible. Of course, our government has been giving subsidies uh, to small businesses, um, uh, or also to all types of businesses, and to people to stay at home because of uh, their health and to take care of them. If we're going to look at the average wage of adults is 20% less than 30 years ago. Um, I would like to share with you this uh, a graph. Uh, it shows actually uh, since the start of COVID-19, what are the cases uh, here uh, in New Zealand until the 16th of, of December, which is two days ago. So if we're looking at that figure, you're going to see that we started the spike in the cases from uh, late February, it hiked in March, April, then started declining in May. And this is when we went to uh, level four and we were in lockdown. Uh, we were declared that we were free of COVID-19. Our borders were closed. Uh, we went out again to level one. We started having our new normal. Then we were hit again. And that happened uh, in August, September. Uh, we had um, a cluster uh, here in Auckland. So Auckland went back uh, to lockdown and people were uh, prevented from going in or out Auckland. Uh, we contained it again and we are starting out again, uh, as you can see in, the, in this uh, graph. Uh, so, if we're going to look at that figure also, uh, which uh, is the statistics of two days ago, the green, this is to show by each health uh, board information in all the uh, districts here in New Zealand, starting with the Auckland uh, in the top. Uh, the green color is the recovered COVID-19 cases. The red colors is the deceased. Uh, the yellowish orangey color are the ones who are active and they are in quarantine. So those are the exact figures from two days ago. Uh, the managed isolation and quarantine are 43 cases. The recovered are 2,032. The deceased are 25. The total cases of COVID-19 uh, in New Zealand is 2,100. So if we are going to look at that and the concept of the, fu the, the future of work concept and how it is impacting us, there has been a tendency already before COVID hit us that there's a risk of uh, a high percentage of automation and significance in people requiring new skills uh, for the work. Uh, if we are going to look also at the future of jobs, 89% uh, of the US company were planning to use uh, big data. So there is already a movement towards uh, higher usage of technology and automation. And I believe that COVID came and expanded that process. So if we are going to look at the expectations of what are the skills that are required for work, there is a growing demand for certain types of skills while there is a decline for other skills. So for example, uh, the growing skills required is analytical thinking and innovation, active learning and learning strategies, critical thinking, leadership and social influence, uh, system analysis, and so on and so forth. And there is, of course, a decline in manual dexterity, um, memory. As you all know, we are utilizing all our gadgets. Uh, we are using technology in order to help us in, in lots of our skills that we used to use before. So we're looking at the new normal, the, the future of work. What is the dimension and what it requires? There are three different sectors there. Uh, which is the, the culture, the culture of the future of work and how we need uh, to engage 
and empower our uh, new workers in order to align them with the digital skills. So requiring uh, talent acquisition, talent development, and talent retention. Also, if we're going to look at our working environment and space and the dig digital assistance, and all organizations have to look into uh, acquiring higher level of technology. And this was one of the challenges that lots of sectors here in New Zealand, uh, uh, as in many parts of the world, encountered because they were not equipped with the right type of technology. If we're looking at uh, the forces there, uh, we need to have a collaboration between the human and the technology. There are two main uh, issues uh, that is impacting, that I'm concentrating on in relation to the new normal, um, which has been accentuated through COVID-19. So we need to look at the first one is gender equality and the second is the future of hiring. If we're going to look at the gender inequality that has been happening before COVID, but it has been accentuated more during COVID. So the economic impact, especially on women that they are earning less, they are saving less, and they are in unpaid jobs. So with people in the lockdown, uh, there has been a tendency uh, that there's no schools, children are at home, so uh, they also older people needed care. So there are lots of women who were actually in the health services and lots of unpaid jobs. Also uh, here in New Zealand, we have the Maoris. They have their own culture, their own practices, especially around pregnant women. And that was a big challenge that uh, the women were not able to reach the care they needed, the health care, the prenatal care, and also uh, because of the lockdown and the um, domestic violence, they were in abusive relationships and they had to be uh, at home with their own uh, abusive. So that said, it is attracting us that in that new normal, we need to work towards a more sustainable workforce uh, and decreasing general inequality. So that is a good opportunity for us to learn from the lessons that happened in uh, COVID-19 and to utilize that to increase uh, the equality. Uh, also, there is lots of hybrid work systems. There has been flexibility in, in the work. So they had also fathers who were at home taking care of the kids, sharing the load with women, which is a, a good example. If we are going to look also at the second issue of future of hiring, uh, the new normal, which is the, the use of video interviews, the use of technology. Also, when people were laid off, uh, lots of people lost their jobs there is a tendency to have lots of abundance of talent out there in the market uh, for employers to choose from. And there has been also a requirement for more empathy. As we all know, when you have your CV and there is gaps in it, you're asked, where have you been? What are you doing or what happened? So there is a, a tendency to have more empathy and understanding with the candidate. On the other uh, side of the coin also, organizations and companies need to be more transparent when discussing their financial status and what are the future opportunities for their employees. So as we can see, there has been a lot of uh, rise in the e-hiring uh, with the use of technology, uh, whether uh, interviewing uh, the employees synchronously or uh, synchronously, and also there has been a tendency to have uh, assessments uh, based on skills. As I mentioned earlier, the need for those uh, new skills, which is also helping in diversity and inclusion of the workforce. There's also uh, an increase in adopting virtual onboarding approaches and new hiring uh, engagement. 
and also for our leadership and management, it has been done remotely. Uh, there is more trust between the management and the employees as they work remotely and they are not in the office. There is more uh, flexibility, there is more empathy and more uh, feeling of psychological safety in the workplace. So, um, uh, to end that, I have a few suggestions. That's for the future, for the work opportunities that organizations need to strengthen their home uh, work at home policies and introduce this hybrid approach. It's here and it's not going away, it's going to continue. And that is going to be the future of our work culture. Also, there will be a need for more entrepreneurial spirits in business. Um, and also, organizations need to be more collaborative and less competitive. There is a need for streamlining organizational processes and also promoting um, work culture to cater for the requirements of future work. So there is need for reskilling, upskilling of the employees in order to fill that gap that is existing between the supply and the demand of the work for skills. On this note, I would like to uh, thank you very much and I wish you all the best uh, in this festive season and a happy uh, new year, uh, a bright 2021 20, uh, for all of us. Uh, by the way, I forgot to mention that here in New Zealand, uh, just the government yesterday announced uh, that they have made a deal and uh, paid for uh, 15 million um, vaccines from three different uh, sources. Uh, they will start the vaccination for the um, uh, people uh, in need, the vulnerable, uh, the, the people working on borders uh, on April 2021. And for the rest of the nation, uh, we're about four and a half to five million here in New Zealand uh, by mid-2021. Thanks again and wishing you all the best. Okay, um, thank you very much, um, Dr. Siham um, Erkafi.